few episodes ago, we made kombucha with a blend of black tea that tasted like Coca-Cola. And it was pretty fantastic. So I've made it a bunch since then. But it did get me wondering if we could do something similar with other teas out there. So I picked up a sampler box of tea from that same company. And we're going to see how these fare. This is the herbal tea sampler from Fraser Tea. And the six varieties we're going to try today are Honey Bunch Berry Dandelion, Yuzu Blue Passion Fruit, Strawberry Hibiscus, Ginger Lemonade, Take Me to the Tropics, and Berry Blue. And with our Coca-Cola kombucha, we wanted it to be more sweet than sour because we wanted to match that flavor profile. But for these tea flavors, I don't think we need to do that. I think we can just make a traditional sweetened kombucha uh, and then we can add our tea. But since each batch of kombucha is different, I'm going to make a little test batch here just so we know how much sugar to add to each batch. And since we're using tea to flavor this, uh, we're not going to know the final flavor of the bottle until after it's had time to steep. Uh, so we can really only gauge sweetness. And just another note is that since this is the herbal tea sampler, none of these contain real tea. It's all honeybush, rooibos, and hibiscus, I believe. I think I'm going to want it to be just slightly sweeter than I would want plain tea, just since there are these fruit flavors along with it. This is 16 added grams, and I think that's going to be good. So first up is going to be our Honey Bunch Berry Dandelion, which contains honey bush, rooibos, and uh, well, berries and dandelion, as the name would suggest. These are harder to open than I thought. And I also didn't realize that these were bags of tea, but that's not a problem because now I have scissors. I am aiming for three grams of our tea, which is apparently the entire bag. That worked out well. And just as someone who does this on their lunch break, uh, I do appreciate how quick this is to throw together. Next up is our Yuzu Blue Passion Fruit, which has none of the traditional real tea or even just substitute tea leaves in it. Got blueberry, coconut, lemongrass, yuzu, and passion fruit. I don't know what that smells like. Herbs? I'm not a tea person, despite the content of this channel. This one actually came out to six grams, but I'm okay with that. I'm going to trust in the sachet. see myself forgetting to add sugar. Or adding sugar twice. That's bottle number two. The only downside is that all this tea, I'm going to call it gunk, uh, provide a lot of nucleation points, which if you watched our carbonation episode, uh, that's what's going to make it volcano into our face. But we shall be wary. Next up we have strawberry hibiscus, which has both of those things in it. I guess I appreciate the very clear marketing here. It smells quite lovely. It smells very much like dried strawberry. Bottle number three. Next up we have ginger lemonade. Something that I thought was very intriguing, but uh, there seems to be a lot of peppermint in it. I would say that I don't know how I feel about that, except that I do know how I feel about that. I don't think I like it. But I am up for having my mind changed here. There's also lemongrass and I think lemon balm inside. So we'll see what comes through in the steeping. Next up we have Take Me to the Tropics, which is a hibiscus blend. It's also got Pineapple, coconut, mango, and goji berry. It smells quite pleasant. These have all been about four grams of tea. And just as an added note, these aren't the only flavors in this sampler box. These are just the six I was most excited to try. 
They also gave me quite a few just additional sample packs. So we may be trying those someday, depending on how these go. And finally, we have Berry Blue, which is our only rooibos blend, which also has honeybush and also has hibiscus. It's also got blueberry, cherries, and I think pineapple. I feel like there's a 20% chance I forgot to add sugar to one of these, uh, but I guess we'll find out soon. Uh, these are going to let sit for three days at 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and then they should be ready to taste. So I will see you then. Now that everything's done carbonating, we are ready to give this a try. And uh, just a disclaimer before we start, in case it wasn't clear, no one actually wants me to brew their tea this way. This is not the suggested method, and uh, it's probably not a good reflection of the tea itself. If it tastes terrible, I would not hold it against them. And then finally, since this is not meant to be a loose leaf tea, there's a lot more fine particles than I had with my cola blend. We're going to have to use this finely knit mesh bag, at least as best we can. And I feel like this might also pop, just because since there's so much particles in there, there's a lot of nucleation points that could lead it to uh, explode. But let's hope not. This is honeybush berry dandelion. Yeah, that's fine. This is going to be a messy episode. From afar, it smells very strongly of blueberry. Up close, there's some yeastiness, some sourness, almost like a tropical sourness. It kind of just tastes like, I did see real blueberries in there, but it kind of just tastes like fake blueberry, like that artificial blueberry you would get with like a blueberry bagel, or if someone stuffed it into like a children's cereal or something. The flavor of it's very nice. It's perfectly sweet. It's got a great sour kick. There's that fruity blueberry taste. The smell of it is just very strong, though. And there is definitely a yeasty smell to it. That's, I mean, entirely from my kombucha. I don't taste it at all, but uh, it is present. Maybe I should stop taking big huffs of it, but uh, it's not bad. It's pretty pleasant. Just reminds me a lot of, like, artificial blueberry. Which, again, it is not. It was real blueberry. But let's try the next. I am pretty excited for this though because, I mean, that was pretty pleasant. I had bought like a sour blueberry soda. I think I would have been pretty satisfied with that. Although, I'm not sure where the dandelion fit in. But anyway, this is Yuzu Blue Passion Fruit. Not the color I expected. Definitely a tropical flavor. Doesn't quite remind me of yuzu or passion fruit, but uh, I guess perhaps somewhere in between. This had blueberry, coconut, passion fruit, lemongrass. Good sweet, good sour. Flavor though is just kind of uh, general tropicalness. Like if you took a handful of tropical starbursts and jammed them into your mouth, it's kind of that same flavor profile. I get some lemongrass, but the other flavors kind of mix together. This, I think, was less successful. Next up is strawberry hibiscus. And how could this go wrong? Smells a lot like our strawberry daiquiri. Not a ton of carbonation. I think a lot of it kind of poured out the top here. Mmm. This one's really good. It actually kind of reminds me a lot of our tropical fruit Kool-Aid blend. Perhaps it's just the color. I think I would want this one a little bit sweeter uh, compared to the others just because with that strawberry, when there's that big punch of sourness and there's that mild sweetness, it kind of just makes it taste like an unripe strawberry. Uh, but still very good and very pleasant. This I would make more of, uh, yeah, just with like a, a notch extra sugar. And I guess I also don't know what a hibiscus tastes like, so... Uh, maybe it's present, but I mostly just get strawberry. Strawberry Kool-Aid. Next up, we've got Ginger Lemonade. One of the brews I was most excited for 
uh, just because that's very much down my alley. The only thing I was really hesitant about is how much peppermint there was, or the fact that there was peppermint in it at all. Hoping it's just for that tingly mouthfeel to help emphasize that ginger, but I really don't want to taste it. Ah, that's not pleasant to look at. It smells like toothpaste to me. You can taste some sourness. You can taste a little bit of ginger. You can taste the mint. And I know there's people that like peppermint tea, but uh, but I am not one of them. Uh, to me, it just tastes sort of like mint gum. It doesn't really give you a tingling. just kind of gives that cooling mouthfeel. And then it's a little bit of mild ginger. I still think ginger lemonade is something I want to explore, something I'd love to try again someday, because I do have a good lemonade concentrate recipe. Uh, but that's going to be a future video. I think I need to seal this off. We'll try another. Next up, we've got Take Me to the Tropics, uh, somewhere I feel like we've already been. But let's give it a go. These are some furry looking pellicles floating around inside here. This was pineapple, coconut, mango, and goji berries. There is a very strong yeasty funk for some reason here. But a big improvement over that second bottle, I think. Just tastes more like a fresh tropical fruit juice as opposed to uh, that pack of tropical Starburst. I don't think I can specifically pin down some of those fruits, but uh, I can get a little bit of the coconut, a little bit of the pineapple. It's just a broader spectrum of flavors there. It's a little cleaner, it's a little fresher tasting. That yeasty, funky smell kind of goes away. I want a little bit sharper acid, maybe a little less sweet. I think that would make it a little bit more interesting. But overall, pretty good. I hate to keep coming back to this comparison, but it's like a more interesting, fresher tropical punch Kool-Aid. And finally, we've got Berry Blue, which was blueberry, pineapple, and cherry. Yeasty, not as blueberry-y as that first one, that blueberry dandelion. Ooh, much better flavor. Feels like a good balance of the blueberry and the cherry. Uh, I don't really taste the pineapple, but there is that sourness, so perhaps that's what it's adding. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, I like this one better. There's a little bit of yeastiness there, though, so I'm not quite sure what that's about. Not terrible, but not unpleasant. So that was six options from our herbal sampler. Uh, I was a little harsh on these, but uh, they weren't bad. None of them were too unpleasant, except for that peppermint. That's not how you make lemonade. And I chose these teas because they're not flavors I would normally ever make. Uh, they're not ones I've ever had before, and they were just kind of the most interesting to me. I do feel like the flavors came through as the tea smelled initially, so hopefully those flavors were pretty true to what they're intended to be. I don't think I would try any of these again myself for kombucha. Uh, it is hard to beat that Coca-Cola one. But I do think the idea of using teas to flavor our second fermentation is a good idea because it's simple and pretty effective. And everything I've tried so far, it has been able to carry that flavor through pretty cleanly. So I'm definitely going to make the Coca-Cola a lot. And I've got about 15 other flavors from them to actually try out. So uh, maybe I'll make a second video. But uh, until then, thank you for watching. This is Reckless Booch.